Perfect. It's nice to come out. Um, the previous talk was on AI, and Hal was on the image, and I feel uh, within uh, like a year of a webcam, so I feel, you know, I've been staring into Hal for a couple of years. So it's nice to finally get out and see people in the flesh. Uh, so, let's begin. So, today we're going to be talking how you can improve your DevOps feedback loop. How you can reuse patterns you already know as a developer. How you can get the consistent experience, regardless of environment or where you're running the process. And how you can have low ceremony and a joyful experience. Because that's what we all want. We want to be happier as developers. So, who is standing here? My name is Matthias Karlsson. I come from Gothenburg, Sweden. I'm a partner and senior architect at a company called Vicom in Gothenburg there. And daily my head is in the cloud, so we're an Azure Gold partner and we do a lot of cloud solutions. Uh, I'm also a Microsoft Azure MVP. Uh, I'm a developer technologist MVP on the DevOps side. I also like to debug codes, I'm an Oscode magician. And foremost, we'll, we'll look at in this talk, uh, I'm very active in open source. I've been doing open source since the late 90s, but then we've all on the Linux space and on the Windows side more since the early 2000s.NET side there. And I'm also, since September, on the .NET board of directors. Uh, so I'm fairly... Uh, and foremost for this talk, I'm also main, one of the maintainers behind the, the tool I've been showing. And also the creator is in the crowd. I uh, promised to shout out, so Patrick is here that created the tool. Uh, I joined shortly, well, a couple of uh, weeks after he published the code. So it's been a nice couple of years. And foremost, Hasman 1 and Father 2. So that's my main priority. So we're going to talk about GitHub Actions and how I think using our tool we can improve it, and how is the experience today? Well, in general, like YAML when it comes for action, was, it was good because it was more maintainable. You get something version with your code and you get uh, like an audit trail, you can find something. Uh, you could reuse easier to these templates between, but it was very, li it's very low in discoverability. There's, it's just a templating language in my sense. YAML is a, like, if you get the space wrong or if you get something wrong, you will, well, you will have. And it has a high bar barrier of entry because of this discoverability. And this is, the workflow is in the sense like, you edit your YAML file and you save it. You commit and push it. You go wait, you have some coffee uh, and you repeat because obviously it doesn't work on the first time. Uh, and the experience that I'm trying to demonstrate today will be very similar, uh, but the, the difference with that, I think it's more discoverable, it's also reusable, but uh, maintainable, but the workflow will differ in that case that we, you will still edit code because we are developers. Uh, you will save, but you will run it on your machine first. And that's the big difference. So you will be able to test that, well, you don't have spaces in C-sharp, but in sense, but you will test that the grammar is correct, the semicolons are on the right place, and things like that. You will be able to test that things ex executes in the right order, that the files are in place and that. And then you will commit and push it, and you will wait, and you will have coffee and repeat. But you will cut in half that, like, you will be able to validate so much more. Hopefully, I will show you that. If... So, so what is Cake? Uh, so I was going to talk about this tool. Well, it's cross-platform. So it will run on Windows, it will run on Mac, it will run on Linux. Uh, it's cross-environment, so it will run in your Docker containers, it will run on your GitHub Actions, it will run Azure DevOps, it will run on your TeamCity, Jenkins, whatever. Um, and, and that might mean it's cross-service and it will, and it's open source. And that's like, we'll, everything here you will get for free. So there's also for free refunds if you don't like what you're buying here. Uh, 
but it's also developed in the open, so you can, everyone here can commit and contribute, raise issues, and collaborate. So this is a tool that started 2014, so we've been doing this for a long time. Um, and what I will demonstrate today, also important to know, is that it's 2.0 that we released in the bar yesterday. Uh, so it's, we will have uh, the latest bits here uh, to show you. But it's not 2.0, might, might sound like it's just 2.0. Well, it's the 119th release of Kick. Uh, we, we were somewhere for very long, and we shipped 1.0 earlier this year, and now we picked up the pace a little more. But it's, it's good to know, like, but everything is developed in the open, open source. And what it is, is a build orchestration framework or build orchestration tool. So it will have a lot of things that will help you in your DevOps process. And it's either a C-sharp DSL, so you use the scripting experience, or we have a console experience where you use the full uh, Visual Studio experience. Then. So what does a normal pipeline look like? Well, for .NET developers, often like you restore your packages, and then you will build your code, you will test your code, hopefully. Some do it, I heard. Uh, and then you package it up with some kind of artifact, a zip file, a NuGet package, or something like that. And then, if all goes well, and hopefully in that order, you will publish it. Uh, there, I heard that you in Visual Studio can right-click deploy. Uh, I don't believe that's the right solution, but I mean, here's for the, the, the non-right-clickers. So, for this, I will do a lot of demonstration right from code. I've done a quick, like, sample, fairly straightforward .NET solution. And it has a solution. It has a .NET assembly that's used by both the unit tests, and it's used by a tool or a console application that's used. So that will be the sample application we use in this demo. So we will first start by uh, seeing how do we... Oh, So we have this application, we have nothing more than the, uh, there. So how do we obtain Cake? How do we get it into our project? And it's a, a global tool, so it's available via NuGet. So the recommended way is that you create, if it doesn't have already, you create the tool manifest. And that's the standard uh, .NET template. So you just do .NET new tool manifest. And what Essentially, this will do is that it will create a config file in your repository that all your tools that you install will be versioned in. So let's install Cake. And now it's installed, and we can do .NET kick. And we can see that we have the tool ready to be used. So to, to repeat, we have the cake tool that we obtained from NuGet. We also have the cake frosting, and I won't go into this space, but that is if you want the console experience. So that's more like you want the full IDE with a CSPROI and everything, but it's the same APIs you can use, you can use the same uh, things. We're also available, good to know that we have, for the scripting, we have ready docking containers that you can use. And this is essentially what i done. For the first time, you will install a tool manifest if you don't have it. This ensures that your tool is versioned, so you know exactly which version of the tool is used in your repository. And then you install the tool of choice, which is Cake Tool, this thing. And for following, like when someone else, your colleague, clones out your repository, all they need to do to get all the right versions of the tools in place is a .NET tool restore. So they will just clone the repository and do a .NET tool restore, and the CLI will fetch everything needed. And then essentially, that's what you will do if you're using on a CI server or something. You will just do a .NET tool restore, and it will have the tools ready. And then you can use .NET Cake as a command that's available in this repository. 
So let's do file new. And in the now where we have the top level statement, we were almost foreseeing this 10 years ago. So let's start minimal and start code. Interesting. Oh, bake cake. <laughs> Let's rename it to build dot cake. We are all about the puns. Doesn't matter. So, if you know, if you've seen minimal bias, you can just do like console write. Uh, let's pick the right solution. Oh. Ah. Perfect. Perfect. So, so if you see in the middle of APIs, you can just do like control white line, and you can do it is, and that's your C sharp. So if you do .NET, we get the hello world. So that's the bare minimum. But there's no product files. There's nothing in the scripting mode. So we just have a different light. So that's how you do a file. This way, just add a file and you will have it. So if we go on. So if we compare this to how would we will structure our file. So if we have something like in JAML, uh, in the GitHub Actions, a restore will look something like that. You have a, we have a scripting step. And it's .NET restore and the folder that we want to restore. So if we go to code, how would this look in Cake? Well, Cake has the notion of, in GitHub Actions, you have steps. In Cake, you have, uh, we call it tasks. So we will do a restore task. We call it task. We give it, give it a name. Uh, restore. And here, we're just typing C sharp. So we have something like, we want the task to do something. And we call that, that it does. And here, you can just pass a lambda to what it's going to do. And here is what we said, like we have things ready in, in here. So if we're going to do something like .NET build, what will uh, like a method like that be called? Well, we, we chose to call it uh, .NET build. Um, we could call it something else, but yeah. So the equivalent would look something like this. And this will define that we have our task that does a .NET build. Uh, to have this task executed, uh, we also have a special, just like if you have uh, defined in your, like in uh, ASP.NET Lab, you have something that you will run, execute us with, and that we call run target. And we're going to run restore. Oh, if I can type. So if you go to command line and do start with cake. Uh, 
it will actually execute a .NET restore. Uh, so the difference, if you see the YAML, the difference is in the K-file, the, the clear that like, the definition looks like this. So if we go to something like how would we do the build, we just define a task. And it will do it will do something. And in this case, it will do a .NET build. It will build that source folder we have over here. And we will say it will run build. And here we will see one thing that's maybe not expected, that it skips the restore task. And here is, Cake is made of what we call a dependence graph. So you can say that to do build, it's dependent on restore. So if we now run, it will first execute, hopefully, the restore, and then it will execute the build. Yeah, yeah, we can, so you can, yeah, quite correct. And if we go on like this, we can have, well, after we want to run a unit test, we'll test. It, we only want to test if something builds. So you say that it's in then. Then it build, and it, it will do a .NET And we don't want to type this each time, like, oh, well, we want to be execute any task at this. And here we have something. We have all this, like this .NET build, uh, this .NET test is what we call alias as well already. So we have something called argument, where we can fetch an argument from command line. We will call it the target, but we can say by default we'll do build. So this will be if we just execute with no argument, then we will execute the build, build step. And if we pass it the target, If I type correctly, then it will restore, it will build, and it will also test my code. And it's excellent when there's one succeeding test. And we can go on like this. After this, we wanted to pack our things. You see, the dependency of is that we can also inject before, so that's different. There. So before, uh, we want to test before we pack, and and here we can just pass like we did with the source things. But the big thing with Cake also that like everything is typed. So we can always like, I don't want my NuGet package to be in bin obj, whatever. I want it to be in a predictable place. So in this case, I can say we have a type setting called dotnet pack settings, which is just a C sharp object. And it has an output directory. So I can set that to, uh, I want it in artifacts in the, if I can, like that. If we add all. The good thing about compile language is that if I do it wrong, it will tell me. <laughs> Before I have my coffee, good or bad. Sometimes you need the coffee to get it right, too. Uh, 
and now run the test app. But if we instead So this is the dependency graph in place that we will run in a certain order. A good thing to know if you're going to test something and you have a long build and, oh, I tested all these steps, you can actually pass. Uh, uh, let's see. We, so if you want to help, there are some common. So you can pass exclusive. Because there's something wrong with that pack task or something. Then you can run just that exclusively. And that's something that's hard in the CI system to do. Like, oh, I have these four steps, but then I can. Uh, so, but by standard, it will just. And if anything happens, it will always abort that. So if, if the test fails, it will step there. If the build fails, it will stop there. And now we come to interesting. Like, how would we? All this is agnostic to any CI server. If you're using GitHub Actions or Azure DevOps or Azure Pipelines, uh, but when we're going to publish then we can run into things like, well, we want to upload artifacts. And to upload artifacts, well, we need also say we need to pack first. We have some artifacts. And here's some nice, like, we also have some build providers in, built in. So if you just type GitHub Actions, there are some nice commands. And lo and behold, there's an upload artifact, which you can pass a directory. And one thing, now I've typed strings at, you see the dot builds or and things like that. Most things are actually typed. So we actually have a file path and we have a directory path. So we can have different operations. So if you go all in, you can have, like, this can't be passed to a copy directory. You can't pass the file to it. So you will have compilation help there. Uh, but we want to pass the directory because the upload artifact can be either a file or a directory. And we give it a name. So now we have our upload. And we can still, even if this will fail locally, we can still test it. So we can test run the upload artifacts. But of course, if, like, it won't. So I can test that all my steps work up to this. And but once it will call to the GitHub APIs, it will either say just some cause output or it will say, I can't find GitHub APIs. But still, you can, before committing your code, sending it, you can verify the whole process. So this will be that. So, so if we check the current code, what's done? So we had the build looked very similar. We have dotnet build. The test was like this. We have a package where we specified with a strongly typed class the output directory. And we have a publish. And all this we have done locally on the machines before we pushed anything. So should we be daring and see if we can get this up from GitHub Actions? Well, first we can do a commit. So So we just add the code. And I won't do some live YAML, because that's why we're here, so we don't need. So I will just patch. Some YAML. And what that was, if we see. So, if we look at that YAML, 
what it does is that it's just a GitHub YAML that says, we will build on pull request, we will build main, develop an hotfix branch, we'll, we'll run on a matrix of Windows, Ubuntu, and MacOS. Uh, we will check out the source, and we will install the proper .NET SDK from a global JSON and execute Gate. And this will be a set of forget almost. We will never need to change it, because the recipe for our build is in the cake file. One thing is here is that we have a target called GitHub Action here, and that I haven't added, so let's add it. And that's good to know that Cake has the notion of you can do tasks that don't ha do anything. They just comp compose different tasks. So if we do a task, oh, see if I type correctly, yeah, GitHub Actions, a task can just be, well, so on GitHub, what we do, we want to upload artifacts. And what I usually do is that I have a default task, which is what, what we will do locally. And I say, like, well, locally, we always want to go to the test step or something like that by default. Yes. So then we can say that default is what we do. Uh, and the good thing is that we can try this locally to see if we had any. Oh. Any typos in our code. And now set default, it should just go to test and then enter. Perfect. So let's send this to get up soon. Let's see. So let's see how this currently we have just our code up. There's no actions or anything. So let's see if we can get something right on the first time. Or not. So GitHub has picked up that we pushed uh, schema with the, and we had the default branch there. It will build on Windows, Ubuntu, and MacOS. And now it's time we have some coffee, drink some water, and wait. But oh, it's actually working. That's cool, on the first try. So it's restoring the packages on three different operating systems and that one. It's our test pass. But something failed. Oh, and that's a typical thing. Well, it failed because that was the only part I couldn't test. But let's fix that. It wants an apple, OK. And, and that's why the GitHub Actions, they need an absolute path. Well, then we have a helper for that. So make it absolute. It's building. While it's building, we can do some refactoring on script. So <clears throat> all you see here is there's a lot of magic strings all by this, and still, what we can do 
we have something called a life cycle. So before tasks are executed, we can actually do a setup task, just like you in, sometimes in tests have something that initializes your test before you run it. And that we call setup. And there you can actually extract or send some kind of build parameters if you want something. And that can be uh, just a class or a record. So let's have, we call it build data. It will have a directory path for source. Oh, I can call it project. It will have a directory path for our artifacts. And format nicely. Yes. And now in our setup, we can just return this. And this context is that you can actually do decisions based on, so you will get uh, some things like the target tasks to execute. So you can actually have different kind of setups depending on which target tasks people in, in use. But in this case, we will just do a new, and we will pass our source and our artifacts. And as we have these, we can all say we need an absolute path. So we can have forecast. We can do it in here. See, it's still building, so I will. That's sometimes with CI, you never know. So, uh, directory. And we can test if it builds. Does. So then we know it compiles, and then we can pass to this DOS. We can pass uh, the build data we created. And now we get some of those that we can actually get our data here. So we can remove these magic strings and have. Right. <laughs> I should. It was just me typing. Wait, let's see. I was going to see if I got it. Oh, I got it wrong. Oh, let's see. If intelligence can help me. Oh, it was two. One. That's a good thing about intelligence. So if you do .NET store, and then we do our project, and then we can essentially, if we're lazier now, we can just copy paste and change the. This will be the build. And 
can have the same for this. Same here. So I'll skip working. Compiles. You can also see how it went for GitHub, all green. And what we can see here also that we had our published artifact here. So then you get back there. Perfect. But having a like a strongly typed language makes it really nice to have things like now it's just called Nougat, but what if we wanted to have the artifact named differently based on the platform? Well our context we will we provide also things about the environment. So So we have, we can see like if it's you, or we can just check this animation if it's like 4-bit. And this could be like if I want to upload, I do a matrix of our builds, we can have different artifact names, but they'll still be a given name. So if I run on 64-bit, I can have this or family. It needs to be to have just the family name in the, and here we can do something that's really hard, like in a YAML file, we can use our full language for string interpolation. And we can call it NuGet. We can test that it works locally. Compiles. Can then push it up. If we can. Of a build, we go have a coffee. But we will know that we, we haven't missed any spaces, we haven't missed any. We know that as far as what's specific to give actions will work. And this also means that if we're going to run on a self hosted agent or somewhere else or in a Docker image, you can have a target just for that, the specific. Where you can even have an if statement like. So we can have in this, well, we don't want it to blow up. We just want to log. Well, then we can do something like running on GitHub Actions, do this. It isn't really helping. This is too cold, it's not live. Perfect. So.
Why is it adding? Perfect. So essentially, we can, while we're building a cloud, we can actually test even a GitHub Actions step. At least we can do something like output a log of the artifact or something like that. We should have. So we have tested all our steps locally. And if we go back to, it's still building, but some should be done. So let's see if the, how the artifact looks after the Windows build is done. We'll let it go. So while we're drinking coffee and waiting for reactions to film, uh, like, good to know about Cake is that you can have the scripting experience and you can have the console experience with frosting. But even if you do the scripting experience, you can extend it. And the, ways to, like, the most common way to extend it is with add-ins. And add-ins are just .NET assemblies. Uh, so, but they have decorated assemblies. So you can load things like poly for uh, transient retries, or you can do Microsoft JSON or whatever, or they are specially made that will exp extend Cake with more, this like the, the dot, dot .NET restore if there's something special there. We have scripts, you can extend it, so you can actually, like the build data file I did, I can place that in a, a build data.cake and reference it in, or I can place it in an assembly that we use in our uh, in our company. You can, also, you can also have an accessibility through modules, and modules will actually let you replace the internals of Cake, almost like with, our, with DIs, you can actually replace things like logging, you can replace how tasks are scheduled and things like that. And how do you act at this? Like, well, if you're doing the frosting part, it's just new get references, just, just like you do in, uh, in any like British studio. But in the scripting part, we have something called pre processed directives that add to the DSL log. So it's just what we show now is just C sharp. Now is what the DSL part of the scripting part. And that's essentially what you do is like this is our syntax where you have the NuGet and the, before the question mark there, when you, can, you can actually have your feed. So if you have some other feed, you can just specify that feed. And that's useful if you're testing a package or have some other. Uh, kind of, uh, like, often you will have, like, a pre-release thing. You can test that. Uh, recommended, so you pin the versions, you know what's running. We also have, for the loading external scripts, so if I have a script, like, would, if I would place the build data in a different folder, I would just do load and that folder name. We can also place script in NuGet packages. You can actually reuse these scripts or do recipes of scripts within your team. And the same modules you can load them from new when the module has that. And that means yeah, if you have something for, we have one that does build system uh, that will automatically add folding and things like that if you, your CI system supports it. So it will fold the tags and output and things like that. So we can see firstly if the build succeeded. It did. So let's check. And now. We got our NuGet Linux, NuGet Windows, and OS X. And that's where you can very dynamically and in the code. And that's really like, you can get really advanced YAML to achieve the same things. And it can be even this, you get a full .NET in, so I can do things like, well, when I build this, I want to do it in parallel. I can do things like parallel, uh, parallel 4 we have, that we're used to. So you can essentially do things like doing parallel. The build data is really powerful. We can do just records or classes. Uh, there's also a teardown. 
that will be executed after a build. So if you need to clean something up with the same thing, and you will get the outcome. So here you can execute some, some code. And that now it's just Lambda, but that could be a method or whatever you want to execute. Uh, we also have, in the life cycle, you can have a task teardown. So we can have when the task ended, and also a task setup. So you can inject globally for all if you want to do some logging or folding of instead. Perfect. And we have 10 minutes to go. So, let's go with this. So, all this code is available, the K project, kpl.net. You can find me as devlead. And I think the good things now are like, the all, all this have a strongly typed language, have a strongly typed, I think it really improves the, the life cycle when you do these things. You can test it locally. You can easily, uh, like if you have a lot of scripts that used to be on Azure DevOps and now we need to build somewhere else, or we need to use the same kind of process uh, in our Docker images, then we can just do change that. And you can even use the same script. And that's really important if you do a matrix. It could be that this will only build on Windows this part, and this will only build on, on Mac. Or you didn't, or then you can create your artifacts, and it's really easy to use the same script and only different with and have some order, still, still have the full like, intelligence, full type system, full everything that you have in a strong type. So that was what I had. Um, are there any questions? Just fire away now, or find me in the Slack, or find me everyone around there. I also brought stickers for anyone who wants, if you want to decorate your laptop. And, um, but first of all, I want to thank you for coming here, because it's really nice to see people in the flesh. Uh, it's been talking into a camera and doing this kind of thing. So it's been two years ago since I had my last conference. So it was really a good experience. Uh, for many, I think like, it was the first time we see this many people in one place. So, uh, and it's gone really well. And even though speakers gone missing and we've done the extra sessions, they've done a really good job. So thank you all for coming. And just ping me if there are any questions or ping us on the project. We have uh, active discussions on Git here. We have GitHub uh, and everything like that. So thank you. <laughs>